There we go. Um, so once this meeting gets recorded, it's going to be uploaded to our project page. And if you or anyone else that you know wants to see it after the fact and remind yourself the conversations that we had, the discussions, the points, you can view it there. We're also going to upload our presentation to the project page as well, the PDF, so that you can take a look at that as well as our meeting minutes. So I just wanna say thanks again and welcome. I'm here tonight with the Copley Wolf design team. We've got both Jim Haru and Michael McNulty in one slide here. They're at the office still working late. So thanks for joining us. And we also have uh, Shauna Dixon from the Parks Department. She is driving the show tonight from behind the scenes. Um, so if we could go to the next slide. Um, here's our meeting recording notice. We are recording this meeting. Next slide. Couple Zoom tips. If you are unaccustomed to Zoom, um, you can keep your video on or off and your microphone on or off by clicking those icons. Um, we ask that during our presentation, um, if you have any specific questions, you can put them in the chat. If they're super easy, one of us will try and respond to them during the presentation, but otherwise we're going to keep a list of the comments and respond to all these at the end of the presentation when we have our conversation and everyone has the opportunity to raise your hand. Shauna will allow you to unmute and then you can ask your questions, say your comments, share your thoughts, whatever. So if you can go to the next slide. Here's our agenda. We're doing our introduction now. We're gonna get into our project overview next presentation of our previous meeting and the concept designs that we have, the opportunity for everybody to talk, community feedback, listening and discussion, and then our next steps. That will be last. So I am B Chatfield. I'm the project manager, of the parks department. Uh, here is my email address and my phone number. Please get in touch if you have any questions or thoughts. We've also got Jim Haru and Michael McNulty here from the Copley Wolf Design Group. Next slide, please. So this gives you a sense of where you've been and hopefully where we're going. We had our first community meeting in person in the park back in June, um, basically to sort of understand what the you know questions were that the community had about the park, what suggestions there were, what thoughts that you guys had, um, what you wanted to see going forward, what you wanted to see changed and what you wanted to see remain. Um, so we took that feedback. We also had a survey after that. And then we came back in October with community meeting number two. That was a Zoom meeting where we showed a couple of different design alternatives. Uh, that was also followed with a survey. And now here we are in January, community meeting number three, where we think we have a design that reflects the most comments that we heard. You know, we, we think we've got something close to um, what we're going to go forward with. And tonight really is the opportunity, um, you know, for tweaks. Uh, if we've done something drastically wrong and you want to see something very different, let us know, you know, we'll, we'll weigh that. Um, but I think, you know, given all of what I've heard thus far, um, I think the design team has done a great job of being responsive and sensitive. And I think we have a design that, you know, reflects the, the wonderful neighborhood that this park is in. Um, and also adds a little bit of uniqueness and specialness to the site. Um, so if if we're sort of moving ahead from tonight's meeting and there, there are no real changes to the design, um, we're gonna spend January through June creating construction documentation. So basically we go from the beautiful images that you're gonna see tonight and then turn them into CAD drawings. Um, so a contractor can build this um, and then fall through spring of 2025, we would be under construction. And then we would open up the park after that. Um, all of this is also pending funding, right? And so I've, I've informed a number of you who have been on my email list throughout this process that the CPA hearings are uh, ongoing as of now. The first one was this past Monday and they did not get to the open space projects, which was frustrating. I saw a couple of um, community members attending this meeting. Um, I think I saw Charles Watson, he was there at the CPA meeting. And, and yeah, they didn't get to the open space. So they are gonna be discussing that. They should be discussing that this Thursday evening. 
at the end of this presentation, um, we have a slide that shows all of those meeting dates, but we are really hoping to get funding from CPA. Um, the Parks Department does feel strongly enough about this project that if CPA does not provide funding, we are looking at our own options internally as far as what funding we could provide to keep things moving forward. Um, but we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. So this schedule is just like everything moves forward smoothly and we have funding. So that's my only caveat about this schedule. So we could go to the next slide. Um, very general quick overview in our parks process. We try and balance a number of things, the city of Boston priorities, safety and regulatory guidelines, the input from the community and our own parks and recreation goals. So tonight's process, tonight's, he uh, I almost called this a hearing, tonight's meeting, it's a community meeting, design meeting. Um, this is that peach circle, the community input. Um, so we are eager and interested to hear what your input is, but we also need you to understand that it is one of quite a few ingredients that we include in our design process. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, the park design here, our city, city of Boston priorities are expanding walkable access to parks, addressing equity, improving climate resilience, community health and community building. Um, we also, you know, those, those line up very closely with our parks, parks and recreation goals, which you can see there on the right, accessible and available park spaces, diverse balanced mix of uses, meaningful and inclusive engagement, adaptive and resilient spaces and promoting connections as well. So next slide, please. All right, at this point, now is when we're getting into the drawings. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Copley Wolf. Thank you so much. All right, thanks B. Um, hello, for those who don't remember from five minutes ago, I'm Michael and this is Jim. <laughs> um, so just starting off quickly with our existing site inventory. Um, if you've been to these meetings before, you've seen this song and dance twice already, so I'll keep it brief. But um, this is just us showing that we have gone through and are highlighting um, the existing features of the park, such as the existing storage shed that the community uses to take care of the park, um, the uh, seating available within the site, um, the current um, enclosure, the fence that we have, the materiality of the site, including the existing brick paving, as well as the nine existing trees on the site. And so just showing some um, more in-person view images here, um, just a couple things that I want to highlight, as you can see in um, this first image, and especially this third image, currently grading and um, accessibility are a big point of concern on the site. There's a large cross slope going across the site that drains into these residents' backyards here. And so that will be something that we'll be looking to address in our design, as well as um, ADA accessibility, which is also highlighted here in this photo. Um, a lot of the site is not very accessible for people with mobility um, needs. And so that is also something we'll be looking to rectify. And just, just keeping in mind that the big point of concern for the park too is a, a high fence, a dark fence and a dense fence. So it really kind of makes it feel a little bit uh, enclosed, but also uh, leaving people out as a result of a dense fence. So. And then moving ahead, we um, contracted an arbor to arborist, excuse me, to come and visit this site and take an inventory of the health of the trees on the site. And the arborist came back to us and said seven of the nine trees are in good condition after we go through and do standard pruning. But there are two of them that they recommended removal for. One of them is the Tree of Heaven in Little Watson Park up here. And the reason for its removal is that A, it's an invasive species in Massachusetts, but more importantly, it is a very weak wooded tree. So we would hate for a windstorm to blow through and create a bunch of debris within the park. Or, or health concerns too. Yes. <laughs> and then um, the second tree here on the corner is this linden in Big Watson. 
And the arborist said, in his report said that um, there was significant trunk decay as well as um, problematic insect activity taking place within that tree. So he recommended that it come down as well. And then quickly touching on our goals for the Watson Park renovation. Um, we're looking to provide a universally accessible park by modifying the existing grades, gates, and upgrading the pavement materials within the park. We want to connect the two parks together, both visually and through um, designed park elements. We want to provide gathering opportunities for the local community within the park. We want to provide a plant palette that is successful and maintainable by the community. And we also want to design a park that recognizes the unique qualities of Taylor Street, which it sits upon. So last time we met, we presented three different schemes. Um, and concept A was trying to make a very clear connection between Little Watson Park and larger Watson Park. And that took out the two corner trees and made corner entrances to the park and, and has the largest gathering space in, in large Watson Park. So we accented that with that sculptural granite bench that Michael referred to earlier. But the intent also was to just keep this, the park open to Taylor Street. Essentially, it was not really fenced off. We used plant guards to protect the planting from dogs and, and that sort of thing. But uh, the intent was to really embrace Taylor Street. Um, so as you can see, there are four trees removed as part of, of uh, the concept A. Concept B, we removed two trees. It's a, it's a smaller gathering spot. It was uh, basically one way in, one way out, opening up the corner of um, larger Watson into the park. And um, Little Watson, we kept the corner tree, so it kept the entry where it was, but we widened it and added a second entry onto Milford Street. The third scheme, we called it the organic scheme, and it has some sculptural elements. It was rather symmetrical in nature, um, so it sort of kept the concept of the, of the um, some rather symmetrical buildings and stoic buildings of, of the South End. It's pretty typical. Um, at the same time, it has a soft appeal to it. This one had gates and has a fence around the park because in the survey, there were actually some people who said they preferred to have the, the park still um, not only fenced, but gated. So because that was the, uh, Michael go over the, the metrics in a second, but because more people seem to respond positively to concept C, this is the scheme that we actually developed further, which we'll be showing you in a moment. And as Jim just mentioned, here are some of the metrics from the survey that we, the community survey that we put out to you all after our last meeting. And just going over the highlights here, um, the majority of you all preferred concept C, the organic part that Jim just went over. Most people preferred um, the 30 foot, excuse me, 30 inch high fence. That would be a very tall fence. Just wire. <laughs> 30 inch high fence. Um, and it was neck and neck between with a gate and without a gate. And as for the amount of planting change compared to current Watson Park, the majority of you all um, asked for more planting within the park. And then for a more um, fill in the blank sort of question, how do you feel about the proposed features? Just a couple answers I wanted to highlight. Um, many of you supported the idea of a corner entry to the park both for um, Big Watson and Little Watson parks. Um, the community was very split, almost exactly down the middle, on tree removal. And um, as I just touched on a second ago, the vast majority of all were in favor of more planting within the park. So moving into our concept imagery, um, this green box indicates that it is um, the elements that correspond to concept C, which you all, the community, have selected as your preference. Mm -hmm. So here's an, uh, a photo of the 30 inch tall open picket metal fence that we were just discussing, as well as the um, 
plant guard on a granite curb in order to keep out um, pets or anyone or anything that shouldn't be in the landscape beds. And these other options more, or, yeah, other options more correspond to the other design schemes that we just touched on. As for park entry experiences, um, we are leaning towards the fence park with no gate as indicated by the survey, although slightly more of you preferred. Um, they deal with the ornamental gate, it is a little bit more expensive. So if we can find the funding for it and you all the community are very passionate about it, that is something that we can pursue, but that is definitely pending funding. As for site furnishings and pavers, we um, have these wire struck brick pavers to match the aesthetic of the surrounding area of the Eight Streets neighborhood, but it being wire struck is much more um, ADA accessible, making our, making our park overall more accessible, obviously. Um, another aspect that we've touched on is updating the existing shed. So for updating the shed, we'll be keeping the existing shed height, but making it wider and deeper so that we can actually fit all of the equipment that is in the park in the shed instead of having a little box to the side. As well as that in our um, preferred scheme, we have these long benches that we've been touching on as well as curved um, benches. While they are not necessarily made of granite in our option, if we can procure that funding much like the gates, that is an option that we can explore. And lastly, showing some examples of these uh, large ornamental shrubs or small flowering trees, however you want to look at them. Um, we'll be incorporating these into our new design to add a splash of color within the park, as well as some variety in the vertical um, aspect of the experience. So getting into the concept that development of the organic scheme, um, as you remember, when we presented the organic scheme back in um, um, meeting number two, it was very symmetrical. And after looking at it a little bit more deeply and, and a little bit of nudging by the Parks Department, they questioned whether or not it should be symmetrical. So it does have a symmetry to it, but it actually also has a hierarchy. So it's clearly connected um, between the secret garden and the gathering garden. We're calling that the gathering garden because if you have a community meeting, it's more likely going to happen here. Whereas if you're going to have more of a contemplative moment, you might want to sit in the secret garden. And you can see it's a little bit of a um, change to the secret garden too. It's, it's uh, in terms of um, adding a little bit more planting. We've added the street light, which we'll go over in a moment. And the intent is that if you say we do have a community meeting in eight streets, and as you, most of you know, I live in eight streets, so I would be participating in this. We would probably gather in that larger of the two spaces in the gathering garden. Um, it's, um, this park is fence, and I want to go to the next scheme. So it does have a 30 inch high, more open character fence, similar to the fence you find at um, Hayes Park, or uh, Harriet Tubman Square. Um, it does not have a gate going to any of the parks. And but whereas the planting systems on the inside of the park has a um, plant guard against keep pets from just running into the plant bed. Um, the dark circles you see on the plan represent the existing trees that are to remain. So as Michael pointed out earlier, we took out the tree at the corner of Taylor and Milford in the large park. And we took out the tree of heaven over by nine Milford Street, replacing that one with a uh, ornamental flowering tree, much smaller scale and probably better scale for the park itself. Um, in the Little Watson and in the, in the Secret Garden, up against nine Taylor Street, we widened that plant bed um, it's pretty ineffective at the moment. Um, it's, it's, it's too narrow. It uh, gathers the water that's draining from the roof of 9 Taylor Street. So there's lots of erosion issues. So by widening it, it we, are, we can mitigate that problem. We also widen the gateway into the park itself. And currently, there is no planting between behind that curved bench area and the wall that exists along Milford Street. 
So we're, we have a continuous planting bed from one end to the other. We um, really focused on the seating area of that park and then added one new street light because uh, as most of you know from the neighborhood, there is no street light in that area. It's either up the street or across the street or down the street. Um, so Little Watts, Little Watts, the gathering garden, I, I mean, the uh, uh, secret garden feels a little bit dark at night and a little bit creepy. So this, this should mitigate that issue. And you can see we adjusted the location of the shed. It's not gonna be any higher. So it will, it will still be below the rail of mine, Taylor Street but it's wider and a little bit deeper. So as Marco mentioned, um, all the equipment that's sitting in a box out on the site can actually fit in that garden itself, in that uh, shed. A larger park, as you can see, are those sculptural curving benches. So whether or not they're granite or not, the intent is that they allow for better community communication. So we do have a few individual benches. So if you want to be on your own, you can sit on those benches. Other than that, you can um, sit as sort of a community on these long curving benches. And um, we have shut the gate, you might want to say, at 247, 245 Shawman Avenue. And in order, we, the reason we did that is because, as Michael pointed out during those existing photographs, um, the park currently drains from Taylor Street into those existing private backyards by the number 247 on Shaman Avenue. And so we're going to be adding a low wall, which you'll see in a second, um, with a fence on top of it, and to allow us to keep the water from the park in the park and use the drains that are actually in the park um, currently. Yeah, and we added one additional light to match the lights, uh, historic lights that are in the park now. You can see it just to the left of 8 to Taylor Street, 8 to 10 Taylor Street at the at sort of the apex of the curve. Right there. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the so the chartreuse little trees, those are the large shrubs, small trees that will add to the plant diversity. Uh, you know, currently the park is quite dark with plants, so we'll go over some planting options in a moment. But um, one of the issues too is that all you have is a high canopy. You have nothing at a lower scale that, that makes it feel intimate. And we did hear from the community that um, one of the favored benefits of the park is that it feels wood, woodsy and, and secret in, in that quality. We try to keep that in, in the design. And probably the, the thing that I think um, most people in the metrics asked for was having an open corner for the park. So the corner of Taylor and Milford, instead of having the gate come right off of Milford into the park next to 251, it's a solid fence that brings you up to the corner. And the corner itself, by having it open, will make a better connection to Little Watson Park. Okay, I think I captured all the little pieces of something. <laughs> So that red line that's in the upper right-hand corner, that is pointing in the direction of this view. So it's essentially looking with your back to um, say nine Taylor Street, looking into the park. And so you can see that now the fence is much lower. It's more open in its quality. It highlights the corner um, at Milford and Taylor to a, a more welcoming entry into the park with that, with that bench on the outside of the park while looking into the park and you see the benches on the inside and that's curving sections. And if you can see into the entry, I just circle it in the cursor by 8th to 10th Taylor Street right there. In the back of that park, when you look at walking the park, you'll be focusing on the new street light that we're adding back there. So even though the, the seating area now goes deeper into the park, by adding a uh, historic light back there, it'll give it a nice homey feel. The red line on the upper right hand corner is showing the view looking toward um, the park from Milford Street. So you can see 9 Milford to, to the left hand side, uh, shop, the 251 Shaman Avenue and Taylor Street in the middle. And with the fence not having any gates coming off of Milford Street, 
it really embraces Taylor Street. And that was the goal, one of the goals from the very beginning was to make, make this park feel like an extension of Taylor Street. So in Little Watson Park, the Secret Garden, you'll see we added one historic light fixture in the park itself. Um, since there's no windows on the end of that building on Taylor Street, that's not gonna create an imposition uh, on those residents. You can see that the shed um, right to the left of that, next to the um, deck of Taylor, the Taylor Street house is still below the rail. There you go. Um, but it's wider and a little bit deeper so it, it can store much more equipment while not obstructing the view into the park from those townhouses backyards. So this is, a, you can see that red line again in the upper right hand corner. It's a section through the larger gathering space in large Watson Park. So by bringing the park, bringing that large gathering space more level, it makes it ADA accessible. It creates a nice large gathering space with a bench, sculptural or otherwise. It's, it'll step down a little bit by 18 inches. So it flattens out the area a little bit while still maintaining the existing access at the not eight to 10 Taylor Street, and then stepping down about a foot and a half to two feet into the back of 245 Shaman Avenue. The, the dash line in front of that doorway uh, at eight to 10 um, Taylor, um, Taylor Street is just the fence in the foreground, because it is an angled condition, as you can see in the upper right hand corner. And this section right up against eight to take eight to 10 Taylor Street, rather than having it sloping against the building. And as you can see, it slopes currently from Taylor Street to the backyard of 245. It steps it down gently. And we would coordinate that with the architecture of eight to 10 Taylor Street. And um, there'd be a gathering of mid-level plants. Um, these are probably a little taller than they would actually be in reality. But the intent is to have a uh, transition from the from the high linden trees that are in the park now to a, a lower scaled plant in the park and so maintain that sort of secret garden quality. And then jumping into our planting palette, um, planting is obviously going to be very important in this park to maintain the woodsy feel that Jim touched on before. Um, so starting off, um, first of all, this is obviously not the whole plant palette. This is just a selection to show you the kind of character of plants that we want to shoot for. Um, so in our shrub planting, we have plants such as red chokeberry, nanny berry, and American yew, all of which can survive and thrive within uh, more shady environments and also will provide a really solid backbone for the lower level planting. Um, even in the winter through um, the American U's um, winter interest holding on to its needles. Um, obviously, as I just said, the park is very shady, very woodsy, so we wanted to pay special attention to our shade planting, adding in pops of color where we can, um, creating just more visual interest that will survive and thrive and be easily maintainable within the site in its uh, proposed conditions. And then lastly, a lower ground cover planting with um, planting such as lily turf, myrtle, and bearberry to fill in some more um, less visually accessible spaces, maybe spaces that have to be um, accessed for maintenance or things like that. But this will also provide a nice green cover instead of it just being mulch or landscape gravel or something. As Michael mentioned, this is just a sampling of the plants. Um, we would develop a full planting plan, which would really build upon this and really concentrate the perennial material probably closer to the entrance of the park. So it's not only enjoyed by the people in the park, but also by, by the people who actually just wander by the park itself. And B, this is your opportunity to... <laughs> to say a few words, but we're actually, um, that was a lot of information. We can actually go backwards. Um, so if someone didn't understand something, or Michael or, or I weren't very clear about things, we'd be happy to go back and 
and talk about the sections, the elevations, the plans, and the types of details we're suggesting. I think it's um yeah, thank you so much for for all of that information. I feel like it's a accessible at all levels of, you know, looking at the plan and I love, I love the planting information that was helpful. So, um, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. Um, if there's anyone the participants, uh, we actually didn't have any questions in the chat during the presentation. So that wow. either means that it's making dinner or it was very clear. <laughs> <Let's hope. laughs> just kidding. Um, so I just wanted to open it up and give people the opportunity to share their thoughts or ask questions. And in order to do that, I think um, you would need to raise your hand and then Shauna will allow you to unmute yourself. Okay, so- Hey, John. Okay, gonna unmute John. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing, Jim? Good, how are you? Doing good, thank you. Uh, design looks really, really cool. You guys oh, nice. have done a great job. Um, some small details. Oh. Um, the I like the two curbing benches. Is it curb on that entire black line of the sine wave? Sine wave. I'm not sure what you mean by sine wave. Behind the benches, right? Are you saying is it curved behind all the benches? Is it a high curb? Is it a low curb? Is oh, it oh, round level? Yeah, yeah, behind the benches would be basically like a six inch high or four inch high. What right now we're calling it as granite curb, but the budget will determine that in the end uh, with that fence guard. But it, it, the grade does step down. So in, in the smaller of the two little curved areas, that's pretty much at grade because, yeah, as you know, that part of the park is very close to the grade of Milford Street versus the, the one that's closer to Rami's house. Um, yes, as you probably know, the park slopes rather quickly. So that would be a, a higher curb on the planted side, but on the bench side, it still would be about four inches above the pavement. Okay. Um, another question. Have you talked to the residents of 245, 3, and 1 who currently egress through their alley through the park? Yes, we um, have. That, that looks <laughs> like it's prohibited. Are they, I assume they're okay with that? They yeah. are technically, um, I, I spoke with the management company just to make sure that um, we weren't, you know, if, if we were to seal off this area, we weren't impacting something like fire egress or something really, you know, significant that we would, um, you know, need to have further conversations with them. And they said, oh, no, no. Um, they also said that they didn't bring the trash out that way, which I think um, is, <laughs> I've, I've heard a number of different <laughs> things about who uses the park for what. Um, but technically, legally speaking, you know, using using the park for, you know, having that informal entrance off of the park is not um is not a legal condition and so um we're going to be closing it off really for their benefit right so we're we stop our park draining into their property um but i think it sort of works both ways we're no longer going to have that informal passageway cutting through the shrubs and all of that at the back and that was a comment in a previous meeting that um and i think follow-up as well people did say that they're backyards flooded as a result of the park. So it's really was a condition of mitigating that condition. Um, and the only way to do that is to raise the grade because currently the entire site drains into that backyard. Yeah, not good. Um, one more question on the benches, if I may. Uh, if we go with granite, will there be a bench on the granite like you've seen Post Office Square or would we just be sitting on granite? Well, they had some design yet. We've done a lot of benches like you just described with a bench sitting on top of a granite seat. Um, I've done more just as granite seats. You just sit on the granite. Um, now, the downside of that is that it doesn't have a bag and it's a little less comfortable. Yeah. So that, that would be taken into consideration. Currently, with the um, 
as you can imagine, a, a larger curving piece of granite would be quite expensive. Um, there's plenty of precedents for continuous wood benches. This, this, the, the Parks Department likes to use metal, um, which you know has its pluses and minuses in cold and hot climates. Um, so sh the short answer is the materials haven't been selected yet. Uh, that's going to be part of the next step. But if it's a concern, then certainly um, having people weigh in in terms of what they like to sit on will be important. I right, think as, as far as accessibility goes, um, we are going to need to have some of our benches certainly have backs and armrests um, yes. for mobility reasons. And so if we did have sculptural granite benches that didn't have backs or armrests, there would right. be other seating options so that, you know, if you needed something to lean against or something to help you get back up and out of the seat, um, that would be an option. Um, we're so, showing you options here to the shorter benches and longer benches, et cetera. And that's one of the reasons why we focused on the long bench image that Michael showed earlier in the presentation. Great, thank you, John. Those are some good points, good comments. We've got a couple other participants. The next person is Linda. Go ahead. Hi, uh, it's John Delano and Linda Reiser. We came in on the same computer. Um, oh, so, okay. so there's two of us instead of one, but I'm, I'm talking now. So um, we both really like the plan. We appreciate all the work that Jim and his group have put into it as well as B. Um, supportive of the entrances. We think that really opens up the park as well as the 30 inch high fence. Really um, appreciate that. Um, the plantings um, are really um, encouraging to see new different plants in the park, especially ones of different heights uh, that will really make it a more interesting place to look into or to sit in. So appreciate all of that. A couple of concerns. Um, there was no mention of any irrigation system for all the plantings. Is, so is the, that going to the, the current, we generally don't do irrigation um, unless it's like a ball field. Um, and this is a small enough area where we, the existing condition is the, you know, water spigot that my understanding is parks, um, you know, turns on the water, turns off the water at winter time and basically allows for irrigation via a hose to take place. Um, and we would be, you know, we're interested in understanding um, if the friends group is essentially like what your appetite is for maintenance of the plantings. Um, because that will definitely give us direction towards, you know, is it a larger area that's planted? Is it a smaller area that's planted? Is it something that's more simple or something that's more complex? You know, um, if there's willingness. Is also based on where the water is located. If we have to drag mm -hmm. out, you know, 50 feet of hose, it's a lot harder to maintain than maybe if there are two spigots or a nice centrally located spigot. Well, that, that's that's yeah, that can be a consideration. Uh, we are moving the water box uh, as part of this design. Um, so um, certainly putting a second hose bed in the park connected to the same system would not be a burden financially. Um, one thing we didn't mention is that when we do get to the final selection of plants, we're going to select the most, um, as many tolerant. Uh, naturalistic, tolerant plants, native plants as possible. So once established, they'll give them a fighting chance. We, I think we all talked about on, on the part um, in our previous meetings that because of the amount of existing trees out here, there's quite an elaborate and developed root system for those trees, which will make the planting of any other material, a little bit of a challenge. And that's why some of the plants are planted where they are thinking there's a possibility that
that that's the best opportunity to plant sort of an understory, smaller tree or larger shrub, and then concentrating more on ground covers and perennials. So, um, but the plans, the planting plan that will be developed will be more native-based, drought tolerant. So once established, the goal is to have less irrigation required, but we all know that we do have last summer, except being an exception, um, dry summers. So um, ha having a second positive, I think is a great idea. What, what about the water, uh, water, the little Watson? Same. Because there isn't, I don't believe there's a hose bin in Little Watson at the, at the moment. No, Although there's, you can connect no water there. Taylor Street, but he has a hose bin in the park. <laughs> I, I appreciate you acknowledging the root pack that's there. Um, as, you, as you know, Jim, it, it really prevents those plants, um, like the hydrangeas, et cetera, that were planted from, from thriving there. They just don't, can't compete with the roots from the trees. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a reality that we're going to have to deal with um, in terms of where plants are going to be most successful. Um, I mean, it's uh, in some ways it would have been good to remove maybe one other tree. Uh, the two trees in the back of the park, the catsuras that they're called, um, closer to two fifty one and two forty seven um, on the slopes. Um, they have the most elaborate systems, and luckily they're in the back of the park. Um, the the lindens um, are, are rather tight in terms of their root systems, so I, I'm fairly confident, based on as much time as I've walked through the park over the past six months um, and looked at things, that we can get a better planting palette on the upper levels than the lower level. All right, thank you very much. Um, there was a question about 18-inch uh, curbs, saying I'm a little confused about 18-inch curbs. So I think um, if we could just go back maybe to your Perfect. section. Yeah. yeah. And we can just walk people through that just so that it doesn't give you the feeling that like there's going to be okay. walls yeah. all over the place. It's, it's not going to feel highest, that. Yeah, the highest curb is right behind the bench. So we might want to pull a circle. There you go, right there. So sorry. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's going to be the highest point of the curb. Um <clears throat> and you know, I said 18 inches because I'm just rounding up that grading plan hasn't been completed, but we've looked at the grades in order to get that seating area to be ADA accessible and comfortable and not feel like you're sitting on the side of a slope. We estimate that that curb on the downhill side will be about 18 inches high. Um, just for people who don't know what that feels like, your standard street curb is anywhere from five inches to seven inches. So it'll be you know two to three times higher than a street curb. Um, there will be a plant guard there as well. And with the bench being there, it, it's, it's, it'll not be a safety concern. It's not a very high separation. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a foot and a half and you'll be aware of it if you were doing maintenance and like, you know, doing some weeding work and standing in the plant bed, looking back at the paved area, you could sort of see that there's like a, a large step essentially going up into the seating area. But if you're in the seating area and sort of walking through the park, you're really not gonna feel, what you know, it's not like you feel like you're up on some, you know, plinth looking down into the planting. It's not gonna feel like that. Yeah. And, and the intent also is to, as you can see from that 18 inch high curb to the wall um, that we're proposing at 245 Shaman Avenue, um, it's relatively flat and there is an existing drain down there. It just doesn't capture anything because it's on the side of a hill. So we're not raising the grade enough at that back door of um, eight, to eight, 8 to 10 Taylor Street to create any kind of conflict. 
the intent is to bring it up to the bottom of the th uh, steel threshold that's there and to be able to utilize the catch basin that's in that area. In order to do that, we will need this two sort of step system. There's a lot of subtleties in there, and I appreciate that if it's difficult to understand. There's also a question um, about the trees, just will they be pruned enough to let light and sun in? Um, yeah, the answer is, yeah. yeah. Um, we, yes. oh, sorry, Dee, but you know, when we met with the arborist out there, um, that was also a recommendation, um, really not only to let more light in, but to help um, ameliorate the issue of the honeydew created by the aphids as well. So, um, so the answer is yeah. I, I think part of part of the design, part of the this project would be to prune the trees heavily. Moving forward, as you all know, that might I know that the neighbors have taken that under their own wing to prune the trees. Um, that'll be part of the park design project. Moving forward, say ten years down the road, it, you might be in the same boat in terms of. You know, getting these trees pruned, and you can, you know, be put her phone number at the very beginning. You can call her on that. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Totally. That is. <laughs> okay, right. the next person is Rami. Go ahead. All right. Um, looks good. Real good. Um, actually, a lot. <laughs> A lot of the questions I was going to ask kind of just got answered, but I'll ask them anyway. So you you obviously do know that the door on the side of eight Taylor there is kind of low. Uh, yes. And you, I guess you've already taken in that into account. Okay. So yep. so it's not going to go above that the grading. No, as you know, Rami, from the right hand edge of that door to two forty five Harris um, Shaman, that's where it really begins to drop. Yeah. yeah. So. We would take into account where that threshold is, not create any kind of hardship. We would never want to create any hardship with anyone's existing building. Um, and we probably will end up lowering that catch basin that's that's in that area just a bit, just to make sure that we facilitate drainage from that back door toward the catch basin that's out there. So um, that'll all be in the fine tuning of the grading. But but the answer, sure answer is we will not. Um, make any hardship on that doorway. And the curbing right now is if we were to put the the lattice work that's on your building, um, we have estimated that we can actually create this sort of low stepping along your building to dovetail with your architecture. So everything feels like it's working together in the park and that's the intent. So even though we don't show your house per se, that was one of the reasons for stepping it gently along the building is to get it down to that grade at 245 in a more rational, intentional fashion, while not yeah. creating any hardship against the architecture. Sounds great. Um, I, I guess I guess we're probably pretty confident that the park's drainage is is sufficient to uh, handle the the water that's going to accumulate without I mean, I guess that's probably been looked at, I assume, right? Um, well, I mean, that's a, it's a very good question. I mean, right now, those drains aren't gathering too much. I mean, they're on the side of a hill. So I can imagine during last night's storm, most of it ended up in 245's backyard. Um, and I, so, I wouldn't want the water to end in 245's backyard. Um, but, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, it's going it's to go somewhere that's not, but we do have a here on the job, and what they would do is be in. In all honesty, um, the amount of catch bases that are in this park is a little bit overwhelming. The, they just don't gather anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so part of the civil's job, and, and as we move into working drawings, we would take a look at, you know, what's what's below the cover, and make that determination. If we have to add a drain. That would be part of the, um, the construction drawings as well. Okay. Okay. We're also then... going to have to get a review by Boston Water and Sewer for this. Okay. Um, and they also require um, 
TV inspection, it's called. So camerang okay. the lines just to make sure that they are like open and functional. Um, okay. So yes, I mean, to Jim's point, like this is a tiny park that has like six catch basins. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's pretty funny. So yeah, if yeah. assuming all of them are open and working once, you know, and we will confirm that before moving forward with construction, um, they will certainly be sufficient to drain the park area. Great. And they're in the right places to capture water after the grading has changed, I assume, right? We will be relocating some of them. I oh, think, okay. Right? okay. Okay. Okay, cool. And then these um these steps, they're each 18 inches or just the one is 18 inches and the rest uh, of them are? Yeah, just, just the one that's behind the bench is a tall one. The ones that are up against your building are closer to, you know, anywhere between eight to 10 inches. It's really just to step it down gently along that edge to create that level area to, to make that drain yeah. that cycle circles functional. Yeah, oh, that's cool. It looks good. It looks real good. Um, you, that's not going to feel, you don't think, cavernous down there when it's all kind of planted and done, right? It's not going to um, feel like this sort of I cave don't... down. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, first of all, the wall, you can see the wall at 245 is rather, you, you, when you can go, go take a look at your back back door, yeah. that wall is can't be too tall. It's, I think it ends up being about 24 inches at most. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And then the six foot fence behind us. So uh, currently there is already a six foot fence. It just so sits at grade. So we're, we're going to be raising it up a bit. Um, okay. And the amount of planting we have to go through a, a more investigative study of the root systems of trees. We can't plant trees necessarily under other trees. As Michael took a little artistic license with some of these things, and it looks beautiful, but doesn't mean the trees will be in that one spot because once we understand where all the root systems are, that will begin to define a little bit of how the planting plan is laid out. Okay, great. Sorry, I, I, I just one last question, if you don't mind. Um, on the huh? seating up up higher on the seating, could that couldn't couldn't the curve bench be the eighteen inch curve? Couldn't they be one and the same thing? Couldn't that eighteen inch curve just come up to like whatever twenty six inches and be a bench, like a curved bench, or is that not how it works? Um, I mean, it could be, but it would it gets into the materiality of it. Um, if it were say a group building a stone wall or or granite, yeah something the answer is yeah absolutely um and we do have a the reality is that we're doing a few of these small parks and usually there's budget constraints so i think we're working within our financial purview and getting making practical proposals okay. right now okay. and the, i personally think that that what you're suggesting could work i think it also would probably bust the budget um okay so it is a bummer i i understand where you're coming from rami because i think you made a point before about like loving sort of multifunctional things and if we could do yeah. a chain all that works as a seat wall then that's great yes. and um i i totally hear you but um it is my my mind is in budgeting mode these days because it yes. is budget season and we were looking at recent cost estimates for um, precast concrete seat walls that act as yeah. retaining walls as well. And yeah. right now we're seeing costs that are like $555 per linear foot for something like that. Um, and so it does really beg the question, like, is this truly a functional thing here that we could use as seating or is it something where like we would actually be making it taller you know it's one thing if you have your seat wall on the downhill side right, right. and so oh let's just sit on this thing but in this right. case we'd actually be sitting on the uphill side so we'd actually right. be putting more material into something so um, right. I think yeah. it'd probably be out of our reach but okay. but I I do appreciate your perspective on it and we'll see where else we can try and um, yeah. flow those forms and functions together I'm a Big fan of structure being part of the function. Love it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Great. And then <laughs> in that picture right there, it's uh looks like there's like a traditional bench looking thing there. Is that just a placeholder or is that? That is, is that just, a place, just a placeholder. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, we actually are, are looking at different manufacturers right now, and that will be probably a bit of a negotiation with parks as well, because um, if we do suggest something that you wouldn't normally find in the Boston parks, um, I, I know that they will want to know about it because as enthusiastic as neighbors are in, in terms of maintaining a park, it doesn't mean that um, that won't right. change in years and then it's up to the parks department to maintain things. So so it has to be a sort of a happy negotiation between everyone. Um, but the but that is not the bench we're putting in the park. <laughs> so just keep it clear. Great. Thank you very much. Looks great. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. Um, there's some questions in the chat about electrical outlets. And generally, we don't provide these um, just because they end up being, you know, people plug into them and charge their phone. And I don't know, you know, Parks isn't really in the uh, game of like providing free electricity, I guess. But um, this does look like, you know, you do have events a winter lighting or an amplifier if you have a speaker or a musician i don't know how do how do people who live around here like how, how do you feel about having the possibility because you know if we do provide an outlet and someone permits the park and says i want to put my music series in here um you know do you want to have that as a possibility like is the is the interest really significant in having an electrical connection and and all that that can entail um, or, you know, how do, how do people feel about that? Because I, I see the support, but you have to think about it from sort of all sides of the circumstances. Um, just curious if anyone has any thoughts in opposition uh, to that. And I, I could, while someone raises their hand to that question, um, I, um, we are working on the Bay, the, re, the re renovation of Bay Village Park too, um, across from Elliott Park. Um, right on South Charles Street. And they have asked for electricity within the park for a seasonal tree. They also do have music on occasion in the park. Uh, as this park has had um, the Boston uh, Community Music Center have their, um, their fit, the music in here at one time. So whether they need to plug in or not for that is, is questionable, but but Bay Village Park, we are working with another of the Boston Park uh, managers to see how can we get electricity into the park for their seasonal tree, because that was one of their goals. Uh, currently, they run an extension cord from the Chinese church adjacent to it into the park, which is very generous of the church, but um, it's not very practical. So um, I, I probably could provide more information on that as Bay Village develops a bit more, be, if that helps. Well, it looks like I'm just looking at the chat. Um, Edward Allen says, that's why I mentioned secured for official use only. So I'm not sure official use, I don't think you're just talking about like the parks department use, right? Like you're talking about people who have permits. Um, yeah. But, you know, sometimes people who have permits you know, like they play music that you don't like <laughs> and it's permitted <laughs> and it's allowed. So, you know, just uh, um, things can happen that are beyond your predictions, I guess. So that's all. I'm just throwing that out there to be a, um, I don't know, whatever you call that. But um, uh, so, the, you know, um, if we provide an electrical connection, you can do lights for the holidays, as as Linda is noting. Um, so, you know, maybe it's just something we could, you know, keep it very much on the DL and it's like one outlet that's next to the electrical box. It's currently out there. Um, we can, we can certainly look into that. And, and these are also outlets that have locks on them, right? So parks would have the key and, um, you know, we could try and control the permitting. It is a small neighborhood park, so I don't think, um, it would be top of the list for like neighborhood concert series necessarily. So, uh, but well, it was actually quite nice when the community music center had, I mean, it, it wasn't Jimi Hendrix out there. It was, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was sort of in the spirit of the community music center. And so it, it was also very limited and during the middle of the day. So um, as 
my 40 years living in this area, I'm not sure how much music I've heard in too many of the parks. So um, I, I think we can discuss power in the park, as B just mentioned, because there is electricity in the park, and, and we are discussing at the Bay Village. Um, I don't think they're going to have um, in Boston calling out here. <laughs> All right, so that's a new <laughs> no battles of boom boxes. Okay. Um, so that's that's a that's an additional scope, which is you know good to hear about, and we will certainly explore that and see what the what the dollar signs are associated with that. I got my checkbook out. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Are there any other thoughts or questions or um, but just before, you know, I, I want to go quickly to the last slide where we've got that a uh, couple QR codes showing the project page and the CPA. There we go. Um, Community Preservation Act hearing dates this Thursday at 530. They're going to be discussing the staff recommendations for which projects move forward. Um, and, you know, staff recommends and the committee accepts their recommendations or rejects it. Um, and then they have further discussion on Thursday, um, the following Thursday, January 18th. And that's when we can sort of really try and push our agenda as much as possible and say, oh, Watson's great. We think this is a real community asset. This is really important for you to fund. Um, sometimes they say we recommend it moving forward with partial funding, right? And that means that if the community shows up in force and says, we really want full funding, sometimes you can change the direction on that. Um, if the staff doesn't recommend it to go forward, it's, I've never, I haven't heard of an example where people have managed to get their project considered if the staff has sort of cut it off at the knees. Um, so I think we have a good application and um, we'll see where we go as far as funding. Um, so trash barrels um, is interesting that you bring that up, Ed Allen. I'm looking at your Edward Allen um, at the chat. And our opinion on trash barrels, um, Parks doesn't have one other than we dump them when they exist and we dump them when we, I'm not sure what the schedule is, but we often get complaints about full trash barrels. Um, so that's a, that's a risk is, you know, if you have a trash barrel in your park and there is a restaurant that's right across the street from the park. So I'm guessing, um, you know, people who are maybe getting takeout from the park, uh, from the restaurant, sorry, may be having a seat in the park, eating their meal, um, or maybe they're waiting for a table. So, you know, trash barrels can be a bit of a challenge in those kinds of circumstances. Previously, we had heard from community members that trash barrels were adamantly opposed, like you didn't want them. Um, right. So we fought against trash barrels in the past, says Linda, okay. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things like we can do it. It's, it's a, it's a cost item and it's a maintenance item. If you guys don't want them, we're great with that. If you do want them, we can provide it. So, um, yeah, we're, we're current, that going uh, in the chat. And, and you're correct in looking at the plan. We're currently not showing them in the design. Yes. Good, good close reading of the plan. Um, Tara has her hand raised. Thanks. I just wanted to ask questions about the CPA meetings and um, our, so the first one is more to get it passed to go to the next stage. So that would be this Thursday. And then the following would be around funding. Are, are, is there a specific proposal you already have into them with a budget, proposed budget? And are there specific things that would be helpful for us to, um, helpful for us in attendance here to 
say or stress in order to um, that's a that's a great question um and you know i think that um numbers attending the meeting are helpful right and if you attend the cpa meeting and just put in the chat here to support watson park right like they see ah someone's attending who's supporting watson park so you could keep it as simple and as basic as that um if you raise your hand to say something um, they have a lot of people participating. So like a sentence is awesome. And it's like, this is really important to the community. And, um, you know, one of the things that our application has stressed is the importance of ADA accessibility and how currently the park is not considered accessible because of the slope of the pathways in Big Watson Park and the width of the gate and the fact that it's a step down into Little Watson Park. So in order to make this space as inclusive as possible, we need help in the costs for renovating it. Um, so any kind of quick, simple sentence based around that, I think would be really compelling. Um, so yeah, thank you for asking. Thank you. Okay, and... Uh, Matthew Butinaru says we should value those trees beyond their aesthetic appeal. They provide ecological benefits, even air quality, supporting wildlife. Um, we we definitely parks parks supports that view, Matthew. And um, you know we're trying to we get we really address our trees during our capital projects. Um, our urban forest team is. Uh, really understaffed and you know they go from sort of disaster to disaster you know trying to make things safe so our i'm part of the capital team and so when we go in we try and make a park and its trees as good as possible so that we don't have to think about them for the next you know 10 to 15 years or however long it takes us to go back and do another capital project so um we do value the trees for sure and we're going to be trying to preserve them and give them a really good habitat because um, the South End is one of Boston's hottest neighborhoods physically. I mean, it's, it's very hot too. We know we love it, but you know, it's a, it's a really hot neighborhood temperature wise. And so keeping those trees in that shade is super important. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons for having the mid-level planting that we're looking at too. We do want to create a more div diverse planting in there because the trees are a great heat island mitigator. Um, unfortunately, because it's so shady, it doesn't have that next level of planting and makes the ground level of planting even more complicated to, to maintain. So we do want to create a more diverse um, um, vegetative environment that's in there, and that's going to be a goal for the planting plan. Can we get, can we get a screenshot? Can, can we get a, not a screenshot, but can, like all these chats that, um, is there any way to like- We'll, we'll get a printout. Yeah. We'll get a printout of them after, yeah. Yep, yeah. so this is- okay. Essentially, we, we create our own meeting minutes, but then we also have all yeah, of great. this additional yeah, text. Some of these, these comments are, are helpful, mm -hmm. even though we're addressing most of them. It's always good to go back and, and rehash them. Yes, indeed. So if, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this going for another couple minutes. And if, if anyone thinks of anything, um, Raise your hand or put it in the chat. But I feel like we have we've heard from quite a few people and we've heard some diverse opinions. And I think uh, in general, though, I think that um, the temperature of the the room was pretty was pretty positive with the you know the layout and and what the park is going to do and what it's going to accommodate so i think we're really we've really focused on some details here but i think the overall my overall feeling that i'm getting from tonight is that um 
generally we're sort of good to go and we just need to have some details to work out. So I think that's great. Um, so thank you everybody for attending. I think um, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up a bit early. Usually we say we finish this at seven thirty, but it's looking like we've everyone shared what they're gonna share, including including us, including the design team. So thank you all so much. Thank you, B. All right. Well, we will um, check back in with the project page, and um, we will put updates. I'll send out updates over email as well, um, letting everybody know about our funding, what happens with CPA, um, and you know if our schedule changes significantly, we'll put updates on that as well. Um, so, thank you all. Definitely appreciate your taking the time to come to the meeting tonight and give us your thoughts. So take care and we'll be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Hopefully Have see you night. at the CPA meeting tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go to the meeting, write a sentence. <laughs>